Hello there and how are you? My name is Mohindo Mubarak and I will come in to our very first lecture of uh, creating a complete solution, uh, building a robust stock management system or inventory management system. So it's going to be a serious journey where we're going to do real world programming and come up with a complete solution of uh, a management system that can manage stock. Uh, which is having a web-based and also a web-based dashboard and also a mobile app. So I request you to be very serious. Uh, if you did not manage to join the live videos, always follow along on the recorded videos. And uh, I request you not to give up along the way because uh, most people always start things and in the middle uh, they find as if they are useless. But those always who stick around up to the end of um, <clears throat> up to the end of a series of a video they always see things making sense and then uh, find them uh, interesting and also learn things that they can help them solve real world projects okay we shall always do two hours uh, the first hour will be uh, for the first session and then after we will get a break and then we come back for the next session of another one hour so it's going to be a serious uh, programming course. Okay, so I'm going to begin by showing you the concept or something that you're going to build and also what you are going to be able to learn. And then after, we go, and also what you need to be knowing before you start watching this course. And then after, we shall go straight into the, creating the project. So let's begin by going through this pre presentation. So it's going to be, we are going to build a robust stock management system that will have a web dashboard and a mobile application. And I'm going to be uh, your tutor, Mohindo Mubarak. So we begin by the introduction. A stock management, a stock manage, or inventory management, or a stock management is a process of uh, tracking and controlling and optimizing the flow of goods from purchase up to the sale, or from uh, purchase up to the distribution. So it is a crucial it is crucial for what for business of all sizes and it also reduces the inventory costs and it improves in efficiency and the accuracy of the business. It also enhances the customer satisfaction. So why is a good stock management system important? It, impo it is important because it helps the stockouts and over stocking. So this system will be able to remind the owner of the stock or the, the owner of uh, a stock, let's say that it's a supermarket. By the way, this system can also be used in a what? In a supermarket, it can be used in a school, or it can be used in a shop management, uh, in, manage, in managing a shop. So if you're the owner of a supermarket or you're owner of a shop, so this system will help you to own you things that are about to run out of stock and will also be able to help you to own you that you have maybe overstocked okay so it will also improve the inventory visibility and control so let's say that you don't have a system what does it mean it means that when you want to know things that you have in your in your in your, in your shop or in your in your inventory or in your whatever uh thing that you're using for this system it means that you'll have to go to the stores and count things one by one so that can be really really complex and hard if you're having uh, big stocks let's say like a supermarket so if you have a stock management system, it will help you to know uh, to carry out a stock to, to carry out the, 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 the stock levels using the what using the system without really manually counting what counting things. Okay, so uh, it improves the visibility and control of what of the stock. It will also enable uh, better forecasting and forecasting and planning. Let's say that uh, we'll be able to to design the graphs and show uh how the trends how which sales we make in a particular season so let's say that is a christmas so you can show you things that uh, are going to be that, that are trending during christmas season let's say that uh, the school has started it will show you between the stock management will be able to show, to show you the thing that are trending in that uh, season of when the school starts etc so this can help you to go in our previous records and also know and know which things that you need to purchase in a particular what in a particular season not basing on the assumption but basing on your own records and the data that you have in your what in your in your stock 
I mean in your in your in your in your inventory. So that is how good this stock management system that you're going to build can help a what a business. It's also help to streamline operations and it also reduce costs costs. Uh -huh. So we will be building a complex stock management system that will consist a web application and also a mobile application. Someone is joining. Let me first approve this person. All right. <clears throat> so I was saying, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So it's going to be a mob. It's going to be a web and a mobile what and a mobile application. So uh, what we shall do in the web or the core thing that we're going to do in web. We are going to do a centralized platform for managing the inventory data. We shall also learn how to manage the user roles and also permissions because you're going to see how we can uh, uh, be able to, um, to control multiple users that are going to work in a, what? In a company. So I'm going to teach you, I'm going to train you in this course how to uh, manage different user roles and permissions. So we shall also see how we manage the product information and also purchasing order processes and also sales processes. And also go see how we can be able to generate the inventory reports and the analytics. So in the mobile application, it will be having the real, the real, world, the real time inventory updates and also the barcode scanning for the efficiency of data entry and also purchases and sales and order on the go as so in the mobile application will have the notifications so we're going to learn how to even implement the notification that will be able to warn the shop owner <coughs> that the stock is running out or something of that sort so what you will learn setting up the development environment i'm going to show you how you can set up the development environment step by step I'll show you how to design the database structure. That is something that you're going to begin with in this very lecture. And I'm also going to show you how to build a web application interface that is going to be responsive even on the mobile application on the mobile phone. So in case a uh, shop owner does not doesn't have a what <coughs> doesn't have um even if a shop owner does not have um a what uh, a, a desktop computer they can as well use what they can as well use their mobile phone to manage their stock so developing the mobile application so i'll also show you how you can develop a mobile application or uh, with uh, also the api so and i'll also show you how to deploy these systems to online so it's going to be a full action-packed course so it's just up to you to be really serious and not to give up and learn these things from beginning up to the end. So the prerequisite thing that you need to know before you get started with this course. So <clears throat> you need to know the basic. Um, you need to understand the basics of web development concepts, such as PHP and MySQL and XAMPP and Laravel. So you need to know those basics at least. So if you don't know these basics, I've already created uh, uh, some playlists that can teach you how to learn php or how, the basics of php so if you don't know anything right now i'll give you the link where you can where i'm training you how to learn php what is meant by php i'll also train you how the database which is my sql and how to set up the zamp and then i also have a playlist that i'll share with you that you'll have to that will give introduce you to laravel so those things, at least you need to know what they mean, because uh, we are not going to teach everything from scratch. If you don't know what they mean, then you'll have to pause the video and follow those playlists. If you know PHP, then you can begin with uh, Laravel. If you don't know Laravel, if you don't know PHP, then you have to at least begin with PHP and understand what's meant by PHP. Good enough, I've already created step-by-step -step videos 
that explain those technologies. So if you already know, if you already know PHP, you already know Laravel basics, then it is okay. Then you're suitable to proceed with this course. So you also need to be familiar with that programming language. And also you need to be familiar with what? With Flutter. So likewise, these videos have already created the tutorials for them or lectures for them. If you don't know that programming, I'll also share the, the link that will introduce you to that. And if you don't know Flutter, I'll also share the what? Uh, the link that introduces you to what? Uh, to Flutter. So there is no shortcut. You have to learn shit. I mean, you have to learn things in order to do what? In order to understand and to be able to do what? To make solutions. So I'll have to share the links with you in case you don't know those things. But if you already know, if you've already practiced the, the Flutter lectures, if you have already practiced the, um, the what? Uh, the DAT programming and you already know the basics, then it is okay. You don't need to, again, no, go back there. Then you'll be good to go. For those who have been following my tutorials up to that, up to Flutter, then you're good to go. All right. So in conclusion, in this tutorial or in this course, uh, it will equip you with the skills and knowledge to build a comprehensive stock management system that can meet the needs of the businesses. And at the end of the day, or consequently, you'll end up you'll end up learning a lot of techniques, or even creating different kind of systems that can help you survive or earn a living. Because me, I'm earning a living from these kind of things. So it's not going to be some kind of a joke. This is a, going to be a serious, serious training that is going to turn you from just an intermediate developer to a serious developer. If you're a serious developer, let's say a professional developer, and you're going to follow along, still it is suitable for you because I'm going to share a lot of uh, techniques that uh, are going to help any kind of a developer in their what? In their day-to-day -day programming practices or experience. So get ready to take control of your inventory and boost your what? Your business operations. Thank you. So that is the introduction and I hope now you have the picture of what we are going to do. So without wasting much time, let's go straight to our business. So what are we going to begin with? Oh my god, I even don't know. Okay, we're going to begin by structuring the database and uh, see how we can, the things that we need to put together or how our project is going to look like. It's not going to be a very final, final, final database, but it's going to help us to have a picture of something that we're going to do. So at the beginning, I'm going to, we are going to make a software as a service. So this is going to be a SaaS, if you ever heard of something like that. Software as a service is a system that can manage even multiple what? Multiple, uh, multiple clients. So I'm going to show you how you can build a system that you can create only one time but if you get another client and you deploy it if you get another client you just add them and then they start using even without coding it again so you can have even five clients or ten clients or twenty clients using the same system so uh that is the structure that i'm going to use in creating what in creating this the, this system so it's going to be a software as a service or other people call it SaaS. Okay, so you're going to learn a lot. Trust me, you're going to learn a lot. So let's go ahead and start doing our database. Bismillah. All right, so um, to design a database, uh, we are going to use a software. <clears throat> we are going to structure first the database. We are just structuring. And then after, we'll go ahead and design now the project. So we're going to create a software called what? I mean, we're going to use a software called um, Lucid Charts. So Lucid Charts is a you may not even need it for the for the beginning because I'm going to design it for you. But when you're going to make it next to your own project, to your own project, then it means that you need a, uh, to design to structure your project. So there is a software called Lucid Charts. Lucid Charts it helps you to design 
ERD diagrams or DRD diagrams so with simplicity it is it is it has a paid version and a free version so for us we're going to use a free version so you just open this lucid chart and then register after registering you come here to documents you will see this after you have registered on lucid charts and then you create a what a new document so when you have a new document you're going to have something like this so this is a place where you can be able to uh, conceptualize your processes okay so if you want to learn more about lucid charts you can search on youtube or on the internet lucid charts you will see uh, some tutorials that someone explained to you uh, this tool and how you can how it can be important to you to design ERD diagrams uh, flow charts etc so many kind of diagrams so for us we're going to just purposely use it for structuring your database and see the kind of a database that we're going to have so here i am on lucy charts so let us begin so i'm going to begin we're going to begin by structuring the project so that we should have the mindset or the kind of thing that you're going to do so let's begin i'm going to come here and create um what do i need let me see this is a flow chart i need let me see if i can add here okay <clears throat> let me see if i can add here some somewhat this is too big i want to see if i can add here some a section All right i think this is what i need and then okay you have to come here and add a section i don't use it also every time they change it i want to add a section of uh of components of components i think you come here Okay. These components, I don't use them most. I want to use a, a section of components that I always use. Let me use this one. I want to design something like this. Yeah? I want to do something like this. Okay. So let's create here some environment. Let me see. Okay, so we are going to begin here. We're going to insert this uh, table structure. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, we're going to design this structure. So the first thing that we're going to begin with, let me first remove this. Other. I'm just going to conceptualize. We're not going to, to put all the fields there, but you can as well put all the fields if you want to. This thing, it's becoming weird every day. Let's see if I can copy and paste this one here. All right. Then it can come. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is called an entity. There, an entity. I want to remove. Remove. Sliding. I want to remove somewhat. Okay, I think you'd remove from here. All right. Okay, I get it. I get it now. Okay, so this is our first entity. So our first entity is going to be, uh, of course, where the system will begin from. Uh, we're going to have a user, first of all. So we're going to have a user entity. So because the system will be used by the user. So that is going to be our first entity. So this user, 
as I'm, tell, as I'm telling you, we're just structured. We're not going to put uh, everything here. So this user is going to have uh, the name, is going to have the email, is going to have the what? Uh, the password, okay? Okay, and then most importantly, it's going to have uh, the what? The primary key, which will be used for identifying this user. So this is our first entity. Don't mind about, we are going to add many fields when you're going to do the overall practice. But these are just going to, this, this, I'm doing this just purposely to give you the concept or the structure of something I'm going to do. So you're not going to put all the fields here. This is just a, a structure. So we're going to have a user. So after having a user, the next thing that we're going to have, we're going to have a company, or oh, we can call it a company, or an organization, or a business. I think we should call it a company, or we can call, okay, well, let's call it a company. Since I told you that the system that we're going to do, it is going to be a software as a service, meaning that it is going to be used by multiple companies, okay? So since we're going to have multiple companies, it means that everything that we are going to be creating is going to be attached to a what? To a company. So we're going to have a company. So let's go ahead and copy this, control C and control V. So we're going to put here company, okay, company. Okay, so this company, it will have a name, it will have a, a logo, okay, it will have a logo. But the most important thing, the one that you cannot leave, it's going to have a what? Company owner, okay? An owner or company admin. It's going to have an admin. So it means that each company is going to be connected to a what? To a certain user account, okay? So this is going to be an admin ID or user ID. So this is going to be a foreign key since it's going to reference from a what? From a user system. <coughs> so you put your FK, to, it stands for foreign key. It's going to be an ID from another what? From another table. So we are going to connect this with this one okay so to connect with this one you just move your mouse here and then you move okay you cannot do that okay you can as well not do that you can just simply come here to to insert i don't know okay you can come okay you can come here to lines okay let me okay i'll show you you can first begin here by saying the line should be pointing like this let's say okay it should have maybe one to many okay like this so you're going to move your mouse here let's start it from here let's start the mouse from the foreign key you're going to move the mouse here i will change this to that then we are going to yeah like this so it's going to be like uh, one company it's going to be one to one so you can just simply come here and change this one and this is going to be one to one so one company, I mean one administrator will have a what? Will have a what? Will have a, a company. Okay, just one to one like that. So you can even as well increase the uh, width of that one, okay? So it means that this company will be refreshing what? An ID of the company owner. Okay, so after doing that, so the next thing that we're going to do, I think the next thing that we're going to need, we're going to need, uh, we're not going to put everything here, but we're going to put only the core things. Okay, the next thing that we're going to need, we're going to need the stock category. Okay, so we're going to need the stock category because all the stocks are going to be categorized. Okay, so I'm going to copy uh, this one here and then I'm going to come here and put stock, stock category. Okay, so this stock category, it will have a name, it will have a photo. And then, since we said that we're going to make a software as a service, that it, that each, that we're going to have multiple companies using the system. So it means that even if when someone creates a category, we have to create that, we have to attach that category to a specific company, to where company, to which company it belongs. So when you're displaying the data, we are able to know which company is logged in or which which user of a company is logged in and then we display the data for that particular company let's say that you have like three companies in the system so you have to know which user is logged in and display the respective data for them otherwise if you don't do that then it means 
that you're going to show people the data that does be that does not belong to them. So it's we are going to have here a foreign key of company what of company ID. So at least every record almost it will be attached to a what to a company. So we can move this one here, and then we say uh, one company can have main what main store categories. Okay, so this is going to be a referencing. So this is going to be referencing from this one. So we can move your mouse here and then do like this so one company is going to have many okay so that is the sign of many this kind of a trick one company is going to have what main what main stock main stock what main stock categories okay okay after having um a stock category the next thing that you're going to have okay um the next thing that you're going to have we are going to have um, we're going to have uh, the stock items okay the stock items you know I'm just creating these things from my head so I'll be thinking also when I'm creating so we're going to have the stock items okay so this is the advantage like you first design your thing before you go straight into coding so we're going to have now the stock items themselves okay so go ahead and create here the stock items okay so I can put here stock items so here are the items that are going to be what in uh, the, the stock so it's going to have an a name okay this the, 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 the stock name is going to have maybe the photo okay so now as you say that every item should be attached to a company so it means that this one is going to have a what a foreign key of, of company id so it is going also to have another what another key another key that's going to have it's going to have a category since it's going to begin it's going to be referencing a category it says since the stock item is going to be under stock category let's say that we have maybe soap so when you purchase soap it's a stock item that is under what a category of soaps okay so you are going to have your what category id so it's going to be also have be a foreign key so you can as well connect it by just moving this one here okay so we are just conceptualizing before we start coding so it's going to have a foreign key from this guy okay like this we move this one here category id or can call it maybe store category so it means that every uh, every product or every stock stock item it's going to belong to what to a what it's going to belong to uh to category okay sorry this one has to move uh to here Okay, it's going, this is going to be referencing an ID, so let's move it here like this. Okay, so this stock item or this stock product is going to belong to what? To a category. Aha, uh -huh. so, and we know every every item at least should be attached to a what? To, to a company, so you have to connect this one here. We are not going to connect everything, but you're going to just be able to relate. Okay. But you can relate, you can know that this company ID is going to be coming from the company here. So you can be able to know that, okay, this stock, it belongs to what? This particular company. So after having the stock items, uh, the next thing that you're going to be having is the stock records, okay? The stock records. Let's say that uh, the stock comes in and the stock comes out. So it's going to be what? They are going to be records on a particular what? On a particular stock. So let's go ahead and create another... A category another table okay so these are the tables we call them tables eh? okay so another table of stock records okay so let's say that you buy uh these are going to be like sales okay let's say that you let's say that you've uh, purchased you've purchased uh, maybe uh one box of soap and then maybe you 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 sell like uh you sell it like three times you want someone one one comes and collect one bar that is a stock record that's going to be created. Another one come and click to one bar. That's another stock record that is being created. Something like that. So those are the stock records. So it means that these stock records are going to be uh, children of what? Or they're going to be refreshing uh, the stock what? The stock items. So you'll buy one item, let's say like soap, and then you start distributing it or start selling it. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to have multiple records. Okay. So one stock item is going to have a what? Multiple what? Multiple records. 
so you can come here uh, so this one's going to have maybe mainly the the stock what stock item id like this so and also the company id because every record should be attached to a what to a specific company so let's go ahead and connect it so one can have what can have many um stock records one stock item can have many stock records so those are the core uh tables so now companies always need to uh, have financial years okay so they can have maybe financial year others they have one year others they have multiple years so in every financial year i mean like uh, after financial year they always carry the stock taking what you call stock taking they say that okay this year is ending how many how much things are remaining in the stock something like that okay we are opening the next year so they should be able to close and be able to know that okay how much did you make in this in this year and uh, which item that are remaining in this year so when they open the next year they are still able to know things that are uh, have been purchased in this particular year and the records that have been closed in the previous years so that is also another important bit of uh, a system uh systems like let's say that a year has ended so they have to close things and they do stock taking and the balance books and then they close the transactions so when they close when they open another year they should be able to have the fresh things and be able to know things that they have purchased in this year and also be able to, to generate a what the reports so it means that we are going to need another important table which is going to be a financial year or what you call it yeah we call it financial years financial yeah okay so every record also should be attached to what to financial year most especially the stock record the record that are going to be changing every time so they should be attached to what to financial years so yeah so this financial year will belong to a what to a company so all right so this financial year is going to belong to a company so you can link it to this one so you can zoom out you can go ahead and link this one to this so each company can have uh, multiple financial years so they should be able to say that we want to see things that uh, we are uh, want to see our records of 2010 we want to see our records of 2012 we want to see our records of this particular year they should be able to filter that we want to see the records of maybe the first year they should be able to do what to filter those kind of things so it means that we have to put also the financial year in consideration then these other records will be having a financial year so we shall have even more tables but these are the most core tables that we need in a what in an inventory that is going to be having um, a what uh, that the, an inventory system that is going to have uh, multiple businesses or a platform that is going to have multiple businesses using the system so these are the most uh, core tables that we need all right so this is a structure so go ahead please and search about lucid charts and also search how to make uh, data relationship diagrams what you call drd so that before you make you, you start creating your project you begin by designing the project and have the picture in your mind before you start coding that is very very important because most people go ahead and start coding at the end of the day they start confusing things they don't know where which related to what thing related to another thing so let's say that you have maybe multiple uh, developers or you're working with your colleagues so if you have something like this your colleague and uh, when he sees this he can be able to know how things are related but you don't if you don't have such a kind of a diagram and they say you start contributing to my application it is going to be very hard for you to understand uh, what i did or what related to what since you don't have uh, your system in form of a what in form of a diagram so these are simple structured diagram though we may have more tables but these are the most 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 core 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 tables that you're going to have and then from this one we shall come up with a complete system that is going to help us to do uh, to solve this problem of uh, inventory management so after you've designed something like this you can go ahead and export it to pdf so that you can be able to <coughs> so you click on file and then say export diagram so uh, okay export diagram mm -hmm. 
file publish or export i think it's export 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 it is here yes you see so you can export it to png png means going to be a photo you can export to jpeg you can export to svg you can export it to visual studio to to, to make soft visual something like that so if you want to export to pdf just simply click here export to pdf then you select the part that you want to export so this list that you, you're designing a a, a SRS of a system if you say I want to to crop a specific part you click there and then you crop only what you want so you want to design maybe an SRS for your project or for the system this is what you do and then you copy it and then you put it in your report or in your project proposal or something like that so if I download this one it's going to give me a what a PDF okay um, So you see, now I have a PDF. This is a PDF, eh? it can even be a PNG that you can share with your friends, you can share with your colleagues, you can share with your teammates, and then they know the meaning of your project. Okay, so don't just rush in, don't rush, don't just rush into code. Uh, first design your project, and then uh, you go into coding while you have something that guides you or that can guide other contributors that may need to do what to work on your project. So this is a PDF. I can even share it something like that. All right, so that is Lucid Chats for you. You can go and learn so many things in Lucid Chats that you can use, okay? That you can use in uh, real world uh, projects, okay? Uh, you can just search a YouTube video on about Lucid Chats and just watch it and then learn a few things that a new things about Lucid Chats. All right, so that is the structure of our project. Uh, now let's go into serious business. At least you now have a picture of what you are going to create. Now, let's go straight into now our business and start coding now. All right. Okay, so we are going to, we are remaining the nine minutes for the first session and then we shall go for another session. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, uh, we are going to use Laravel, as I told you. So the first thing that you need to have is to have a composer installed on your, on your, in your what? On your computer. So go ahead and search for PHP composer on google so this php composer it will help you to be able to create projects on what on uh, of, of of laravel okay if you don't have php composer okay i'm going to give you a link in the description or you can come to my youtube channel that i'm going to explain to you how to download and install php composer so go ahead and install php composer and let it run on your computer okay so for the windows people you just download it and just install it by pressing next 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 okay uh, for mac you just run a command and then it will go ahead and uh, install in your what in your laptop or in your computer so if you don't know php composer i'll give you the link of the video and then you'll go ahead and watch that video i'll share the links and attach them to this uh, video and watch that video very carefully and then you'll be able to have composer you can even come to youtube uh -huh. come to youtube and go ahead and search install php composer you're going to find there so many videos that are going to teach you you cannot watch like three videos and fail to have it installed in your laptop or in your computer you just they're just short videos this is four minutes five minutes four minutes four minutes so go ahead please and install php composer in your laptop okay that is the first step yeah so if you if you did not do hard if you did not want to do hard things so some people are going to give up at this level i know okay they'll be like ah, these things are already boring let me just give up but those who really know what they want they'll go ahead and pause the video and install the php composer in their computers so you cannot watch you cannot watch like five videos of installing php composer and still fail to install php composer so please go ahead and install php composer i'll also give you the video of my own uh i'll give you the link of the video of my own that shows you how to install php composer 
So let's say that you've installed PHP Composer. Let's say that you've paused the video and you've watched these videos of how to install PHP Composer and you have it in your uh, laptop now installed. Okay. So the next thing is going to it's going to be creating a what? A Laravel project. Okay? We're going now to create a what? A Laravel project. So first of all, you need to have ZAMP installed in your laptop. If you don't know ZAMP, still it means that you need to learn a lot. So go to my YouTube channel. If you don't know ZAMP, just go to my YouTube channel and come to uh, search learn it with Muhindo to my YouTube channel. Then click on uh, on my YouTube channel. And then if you don't know what is meant by ZAMP, let me assume that this is your first video and you don't know what's meant by ZAMP. Then click on uh, playlists and then you come here and search for the playlist called the... Um, PHP for beginners, where is it? It is web for beginners. This video, I mean this playlist. This playlist will give you all, it has 31 videos. It will give you all the basics that you need to have in order to do what? In order to be at this level. So, but if you already know ZAMP, then you're good. You don't need to even watch these videos. Then if you don't know Laravel, you'll watch this tutorial, Advanced Web Programming. It will give you the best grounds, step by step of how to get started with what? With Laravel. Okay, so you're going to have ZAMP here, okay, you're going to have ZAMP here, and then I'm mean, going to learn ZAMP, how to use ZAMP, how to install ZAMP here, and then over here I'll give you the, the basics of Laravel, okay? Those two playlists, I recommend you to go and watch them if you don't know what you're talking about right now. Okay, so after having ZAMP installed, after having PHP Composer installed, the next thing now is you're going to now to create a project, a PHP project. Now, to create a PHP, I mean, sorry, a Laravel project. To create a Laravel project, you just need to come to Google and search uh, create Laravel project. So even me, I don't know the commands in my head. <laughs> so you'll come here and then you'll find uh, the steps that you need to take in order to do what? To create um, a Laravel project. So this is the, the command that you have to run to create a Laravel project. It is just simply composer create project. So this is the command of PHP composer. And then you say create project and then you say Laravel stroke Laravel and then you give the project name. All right. So let's create our project. Okay. So the coding has started. So you're going to open your terminal. I believe at this point you know what is meant by terminal. If you don't know terminal, then please go and watch the videos that I've showed you. Okay. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my project in my ZAMP folder in my htdocs. If you don't know htdocs still, I recommend you to go and watch those videos so you can know what's meant by htdocs because this is not an absolute beginner's uh, project. But those who know htdocs, then you know what's meant by PHP. So this is my, my what? My, my, my ZAMP for Mac, okay? So I'm going to put my project into htdocs. So htdocs is a, is a folder where we put our what? Our, okay, uh, is a folder. All right, I think, let me not put in htdocs because it may confuse some of you. Let me leave it, let me leave it. Okay, I'm just going, I'm going to put my project in, um, in a folder, in some folder, okay? So once you open your, your project here, I mean, once you open your terminal, you can write PWD, okay? I don't know what's made by a path or whatever. PWD, it will literally give you where you are or the, the folder that you're in, okay? So if you're in disk C, you'll be able to know that you're in disk C if you're using Windows. So for me here, I'm on my root folder, okay? So I'm trying to go step by step for those who are new to Laravel so that they can understand. So let me just teach you a few commands that you need to know, okay? PWD, it will give you uh, the current folder that you're in right now. So if you write, if you write LS, okay, this is going to list the folders that are inside that folder, okay? So if I write LS, it will give me a list of the folders or the files that are in this folder. So you see, I have here desktop, uh, so this is my desktop, eh? So if you write LS in your computer, You'll be able to know. So this is my desktop. 
you can see i have here desktop i have documents i have downloads something like that so i'm able to see all things here okay that i have all right so i want to put my project so likewise you should also determine who i want to put your project now for me i want to put my project on desktop in this folder of github so get this github is the is the folder where i always put my projects okay so i'm going to put in this folder so you also determine the project the folder where you want to put your what you where you want to put your project okay so it can be on in zamp it can be in, in in your github folder it can be in any kind of folder so for me i want to put in this github folder so this github folder is inside desktop and then in desktop there is what there's github folder so in my terminal i'm going to navigate from wherever i am and then i come to what to this github folder how together so i'm going to teach you how you can navigate from wherever you are and change the folder and go to the folder that you want in particular so you're going to come to this folder right this particular folder okay let's do that okay okay so so i've shown you two commands one command is called pwd it will give you the path of where you are right now okay another one is called ls ls to list the folders and files in that particular folder that you're in now for me to reach this folder of github this one okay this one i need to first go inside the desktop because this git this github folder is on my desktop so i need to first go to desktop and then i go to github so if i want to navigate to to to, to desktop to clear screen in windows right cls then it will clear screen eh? c clr C, C, CLS, something like that. Okay, you can search a command for clearing screen on Windows. On Mac, you just press Command and K, it will clear screen to remove the previous garbage. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is. Uh, <laughs> our time is over. <laughs> I was scared. Okay, our, our, our time is over. Uh, let's go and have a break of. Uh, of five minutes then after five minutes we come back for the last session so in that last session is so we're going to now create a laravel project uh let's have a break of five minutes then after five minutes uh we join again others you can skip around after five minutes you join again and then we do another one hour okay so right now it is um uh, 15 past uh, past what past nine or a quarter past nine so at 20 past nine we should be back and do the last session so let's have a break